la ooh la la. Hi guys. I hate it when I'm I'm doing a live and, and my stuff is not straightened out. I don't like it. It annoys me. Oh where everybody, where everybody at? Where everybody at? Oh let me get comfortable. Comfortable. Why? Today I had to chase my children away. Hang on. I had to chase my children away today. Eesh, this is a hot topic. In fact, matter of fact, please, if you are a, 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 a parent of an older child, mom, I'm talking to you, mom. Mom, the toro. Please don't watch this live, mommy. Mom, anybody who is old enough to be my parent, my mommy or my dad, don't watch this live. This is not for you. Grandparents, Shosho Nawuka, please don't watch this live. Eh? Please go to bed. Oh, go somewhere. Children, this is not for children. This live is not for children. Okay? I'm going to keep it short because I have to make dinner for my boys. Today I'm making aguetoero. For those who don't know, I am aguetoero. My grandmother, my maternal grandmother, my beloved Shosho. Her name was Wajiko Wagitoero. And I only learned this year what that meant, the name Wagitoero. This year or maybe last year. Wagitoero, my Shosho was is famous in where we come from in our village. She's famous and she's called Wajiko Wagetoero. Or if you go to my village and you mention Wajiko Wagetoero, everybody will know who you're talking about. And it's because I used to wonder why was my shushu called Wajiko Wagetoero? Because it's funny. If, if you're not a cute, Getoero is a meal that has everything in it. Onions, tomatoes, spices, meat, beef meat, and then all the veggies you can think. Today I'm doing potatoes. I'm going to do some green banana. I'm going to do biriganya and, and carrots. My kids better not be no, up, up in here knocking. It's just a mixture of goodness. And apparently my great-grandfather... My grandma's dad loved Getoero so much that everybody called him. <laughs> My grandfather's name was, uh, I get confused. Mom, don't be mad at me. You shouldn't even be watching this anyway, mommy. My grandfather, my great grandfather's name, my, my, my grandmother's father was called Kamanga. Kamanga. Kabogo Kamanga. Kabogo Kamanga loved his getoero. <laughs> so his children and my grandma was the firstborn was called Wagetoero. Wajiko Wagetoero. The siblings were Wamoyo Wagetoero or Wajito Wagetoero, etc. That's what my grandparent, my shosho was called. So naturally, I am Wajiko Wagetoero. Now, I'm wearing this ring because it's poignant. And I'll be talking about this in just a minute. Meanwhile, let me tell you the backstory to this dildo from China. Before I start, I have to say my name is Angie Shiko. And welcome to the Angie Shiko Keeping It Real Zone. Yes. Yes. Karibuni. Tag your friends, call, I don't, doesn't matter, whatever. Anywho, so this dildo from China saga started in 2015. And I'm going to take you back there because it's very interesting what the devil does to come into your life and destroy you. And before I go any further, I want to tell the Kenyan women out there that are loving on me, praying for me, supporting me, checking in on me, thank you. You know yourselves. I'm not going to mention you 
because there are some bullies out here. But thank you. The only thing I can do to show my gratitude is to pray for you. Thank you for the wisdom that you impart on me. Thank you for just even that inbox message, that phone call. Ladies, I love you. And then there are others that I'm not going to... Today, today, let's keep it loose and lively. So, the Bible says, even my son Jalen, both my boys have memorized the verse. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came so we can have life and have it to the full. The thing is, I remember the verse, but I don't remember where it is in the Bible. But anyway, one more thing. This scarf, this silk scarf, I love it. My mom bought this scarf for me in London last year when we all kind of met up in London. And this is all I wanted. I didn't want her to buy me anything else. Because usually when she and I get together, she's spending all the money on me. This is all I wanted. She did not even hesitate. She bought it for me over there in the shopping district of, of London. I forget what it's called. Anyway, I love this silk scarf. I'm not having a bad hair day. I just, <clears throat> I just wanted to wear this scarf today. Anyway, so let me start by saying that I love Shina. I love Shina. If you have not been to Kenya and you have not ridden the train, the new train from Nairobi to Mombasa, you should. I mean, it's just fantastic. I wish the train was faster, but even in its slowness, it's really cool because you get to see my beautiful Kenyan countryside. I mean, it's just amazing. It's beautiful. So I'm grateful for the Chinese, but I never shop anything from China. I don't because I don't trust them. But let me take you back a little bit before I show you the products from China. Somebody's going to take a screenshot of me <laughs> in my in my video and, and call me a lunatic, but I don't care. I don't care. I'm a strong woman. So anywho... Let me take you back to 2015. I don't want to go back to 2014 because I've already talked about that drama. In fact, go over to my uh, YouTube channel. You'll see the video that says, Women, thou shall not settle. Because in 2014, I settled. I was introduced to a Kenyan man that was living in Kenya. Excuse me. And he was in a bad state. He was broke. He was lonely. Hey, what's up with all the gas? And he was cute. And I thought to myself, well, maybe this is my man. Maybe this is the guy that God created for me. So I went all out. I financed everything from the Makarata Sea. Everything was being approved, poop, poop, approved, approved, approved to his visa thingy in Nairobi, approved, approved, approved to his airline ticket, everything. I financed everything. And soon he was here. Then when he arrived, you have to go and watch the other video. I can't even talk about it. But anywho, 2015, I had to divorce him. I, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. Now I was back to square one. Actually, I divorced him in 2016, but I was back to square one where I'm all alone. I'm lonely. I am just turning four. I have had just turned 40. I had my nyeyes like you can imagine. I don't know what it is about a 40 year old that just gets my nyeyes. It's like you're 20 all over again. It was horrible. So anyway, I've divorced him. He's out of the picture. And then one day I'm scrolling through my Facebook career timeline. And I see this man. This Kenyan man from Embu. I call him my MBN specimen. I wrote about him in my book. I wrote about him in my book, In Search of My Father. I know you can't read this because it's upside down. But this is what I wrote about my MBN specimen. Because at this point, the manyegis are serious. They are 
just like, oh, Lord Jesus, please help me. <sighs> After I divorced the man, Gigi, Gigi, look for that video on my channel. It's called Women Thou Shalt Not Settle. 2016, I'm scrolling through my timeline and I see this man. And I write in my book, that summer I had been getting over a man I had never even met. I had seen Jays. I had to use a pseudo, you know, because I don't want anybody to know who he is. Jays picture on Facebook and I had been immediately smitten with him. Coupled with the fact that he was just absolutely handsome and fit he hailed from the same area i had attended high school and his family was very prominent there's something about us kenyans we love prominent people i don't know why oh hi engineer hi advocate hi Sejuina. i'm a kenyan so uh, the fact that his family was prominent i was already in hooked I had sent him a message inbox, letting him know that I thought he was very good looking. And shortly we had exchanged phone numbers. I had envisioned Jay, my ambient specimen, as the per uh, perfect man for me. Not only was he very easy on the eyes, he was also extremely intelligent. He had a great job in the IT industry and I had fallen even more in love with him all when I found out that he had been a math major at an elite U.S. university. Elite U.S. university. Math major. Keep in mind, I suck at math. I had a D in math, form four, D. Math and me, we are not friends. No, 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 mm -mm, no, mm -mm. I hate math. I hate numbers. Now this man is coming up on my Facebook wall, timeline, looking as hot as hell, let me keep reading. <clears throat> Excuse me. The saying that opposites attract seemed so true. I would lay in my bed staring at his picture. He was clean cut with absolutely no facial hair. And it looked like he had had a fresh haircut. People who know me know not too many people. I don't like hair. I don't like hair on a man. Anyway, I could almost smell his aftershave. Just looking at him on his Facebook picture, I could almost smell his aftershave. He was wearing what appeared to be a very expensive, dark blue Italian suit. Again, anybody who knows me knows that I love a handsome man, a handsome, clean-cut man in a nice, expensive suit. No tie, just the suit in a nice, crisp shirt. No tie, because I think the tie is too suffocating. That's how he was dressed. And a nice Italian shoe. Hey, this man. I could almost smell his aftershave. Manieges, manieges, manieges. He was looking straight into the camera and right into my soul. I think I fainted. Literally fainted. Every time I saw that picture. He appeared to be wearing what appeared to be a very expensive dark blue suit, and I could see his muscular chest and biceps bulging underneath that expensive blue suit. Yeah. And they were handsome muscles, not the kind that are the result of steroids. No, I literally wanted to undress him every time I poured into that picture. I wanted to sink my voluptuous lips into the folds of his neck because he has these cute folds in his neck. Nibble gently on his cute ears ah! as I worked my way to his full lips. I imagined laying next to him with my head on his strong pectoral muscles. Pectoral muscles. As I counted his abdominal muscles, this guy had an eight, maybe a 10 pack. That wasn't an eight pack. That was not a six. That was a 10 pack. 
I love a fit man. I love a fit man. And I remember whispering a real quick prayer and saying, thank you, Lord, for creating such a perfect man. This ambient specimen invited me to go to Dallas. This was 2016. You all know the rest of that story. I've talked about it on my Facebook. Been there, talked about it. So this is 2016. He dissed me. This beautiful Greek looking man dissed me. So I was back again to where I was lonely and horny. I'm going to keep it real. After all, this is the Angie Shiko keeping it real zone. I was horny as heck. So, 2017, I'm just dealing with these losers that had nice size penises, appendages, but didn't have anything to offer me. You know, they just wanted me for my body, but couldn't even have a discussion with my boys. Um, obviously, I could tell these are not men who would be husband material. Then, 2017, I got laid off from my job. And I chilled out a little bit. <coughs> There's something about being laid off from your job that causes you to lose your niggas. <coughs> Excuse me, excuse me. It causes you to lose your niggas. So I had to regroup. 2018, I was in a regroup type mode. And I was thinking to myself, okay, I've been laid off. Thank God I have some money saved up for bills. <coughs> I don't know why I'm... <coughs> I need water. So I forgot about niggas for a minute. Now, come 2019... I have written my book. I have published it. <coughs> Fall of 2019. I had been praying the whole time I'm praying because now I'm getting closer and closer to my father, God. Don't get it twisted. My father is God. My father is not a mortal man. And I had been telling my father, Lord, I want you to bless me. I want to be obedient to you so that you can bless me. I want to stop fornicating. I want to stop drinking. I want to stop smoking. I want to do your will. So help me because I can't help myself. I am weak. I have no self-control. So, if you want me to stay pure, please take away these niggas from me. Because I don't want to fornicate anymore. Well, guess what? God answered that prayer. He didn't take away the niggas completely. Maybe he did. But I literally stopped fornicating. This is uh, mid-2019. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, wow. I haven't called so-and-so in a while to come and service me. I'm changing. I'm growing. Oh, I haven't called so-and-so to come and service me. Oh, my gosh. My father has answered my prayer. I will not fornicate no more. But the niggas were still there. So, in my twisted mind, as sinners, this is what we do. We make excuses and we say, okay, fine, Lord. Maybe fornicating is a sin. Adultery is definitely a sin. I've been teaching my boys about sexual immorality the past two weeks. And uh, they're getting ready to do their final test for module two. And when we were learning about sexual immor immorality, the, some of the things we learned about were sexual immorality. The things God does not like is one fornication, obviously adultery. We used the story of David and Bathsheba to learn about adultery. I mean, that that story of David and Bathsheba is just full of sins in the, in the Ten Commandments. Like David just pretty much 
<laughs> obliterated the Ten Commandments. He sinned across the board, David, when he sinned with Bathsheba. He committed adultery. He lied. He murdered. But God still loved him. Isn't he a good God? Isn't he a good God? Glory to God. So anyway, I used that as a backdrop for my lessons to my boys about sexual immorality. We learned about adultery, fornication, masturbation, homosexuality. I'm not, I'm, I have nothing against LGBTQ, okay? But I'm a Christian and, and, and that's what that is. So two weeks, two weeks ago, I taught them about all that, but... 2019, I was struggling. I was struggling. The Nyeges were there. The early 40s Nyeges are ridiculous. And I had already given up fornication. I had already deleted the men's numbers. Any man I used to call to come and serve, I had deleted the numbers. Then I said to myself, but Lord, and I told my father, I said, Lord, masturbation is not a sin. Come on, Lord. You can just give me this one thing masturbation please because sometimes i have these niggas and i have to get rid of it hmm. so last year i don't know if any of you remember <laughs> i made a post on my wall and i said i am expecting a very important package and by the way, my mommy bought me these earrings. My mommy is my um, jewelry expert and perfume provider. She knows I love perfume and jewelry, and she has such good taste. She got these from me for, from India, and this chain, I love them so much. Pure gold from my mama, my mom, my mommy. I love her. I love you, mom. Please don't be watching this. Please. Oh, God, go to bed. <laughs> It's like 1 a.m. in Kenya. Anyway, so 2019, I am tense at work because I had just gotten a great new job, which I still have. Thank you very much. I still have my job. I don't care how many 80, 100 emails went to HR. Girl, please. <laughs> Laughable. In any event... I was at work and I'm saying, Lord, please don't let my boys open my package. Because especially Jalen, Josh is very respectful. Josh, my 16-year-old, will not open anything until, unless I tell him to open. Jalen, he doesn't care. Jalen is Kichwangumu like me. He finds a package, he opens it up. So I was worried because I had gone on Amazon.com and ordered... A dildo. What is a dildo? I'll tell you in a minute. But here's the thing. I have had dildos since I was in my mid-20s. I didn't know what dildos were when I was in college. 20, 21, 22, 23. 24. Actually, I came to learn about dildos when I moved to Ohio when I was 25. <clears throat> they have a store here called Lion Den. Lion Den is a store in Columbus. I don't know if they're, they's, they have similar stores elsewhere in other states. But Lion Den specifically sells, whoa, all things sex. They sell dildos, vibrators, little rubber pussies, porn videos, gels and creams, batteries. I mean... I used to go to Lion Den to buy a dildo and then I would get bored with it and throw it away and go and buy another one. But by 2019, I, I was not about to go into a Lion Del, Den because I don't want some Kenyan finding me in there buying a dildo. Hey, hey. No, uh -uh, that would be too embarrassing, right? So I went... Towards the end of 2019, I went on Amazon.com. You see, you got to love Amazon, right? 
you got to love Amazon because Amazon is like Costco. They source all the good suppliers, all the good retailers. They source them and then they bring you a good product in their store. This is why I'm a diehard Costco fan. Because when I go there, I know I'm buying something, a product that is classy and that is absolutely fantastic. So me, I was shopping for a dildo. I didn't want to go to Lion Den. In my head, I'm thinking masturbation is not a sin. Eh? We've already gotten rid of fornication. I've not fornicated for six months, Lord. At least give me masturbation for when I'm really having the niggas. Now, when I saw, I, so I go on Amazon.com and I'm shopping for sex toys. Lord forbid. And I see this sex toy, a dildo. And I, <coughs> I'm thinking to myself, oh, dang, that looks good. Oh, snap. <laughs> Keep in mind, last year, early last year, I was shopping. I showed you guys the, the video. I mean, uh, not the video, but the website, AliExpress.com. AliExpress.com. That's where I got this ring from. This is a Princess Diana ring. From AliExpress.com. I paid $10 for this. And it's so real. For $10. And I got these earrings to go with it. And this um, necklace, whatever you want to call it. I just need to buy for it a, 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 a silver necklace is what I need to buy. Gorgeous. Go Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, these are earrings. This is a pendant for your silver necklace. And this is my ring. I bought these at AliExpress last year, July, June. And I. this is my birthstone. This is a sapphire. I'm a Virgo. So this is my birthstone. I love my birthstone. I bought these for myself. Earring. Necklace pendant and this gorgeous Princess Diana ring, uh, ring. And then I bought the same for my sister in London. She's a ruby. I bought the same from, for my mom, who is a, uh, she's the light blue color. And for my nieces in London. Gorgeous. And I paid $9.99. For these. Great price. That's where some of when you when you buy that's why I said don't buy stuff from people who are selling you clothes on a on an up you know increasing the price. Just go to AliExpress. You'll get good stuff. Look at that. Look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I just need a real silver. necklace for that pendant i mean absolutely beautiful so i was in love with aliexpress but i didn't shop for my dildo on aliexpress i'm gonna wrap this up now because i need to go and cook for my children uh you during the week i'm so tired so joshi makes a great meal maybe i'll cook twice during the week and then the rest of the time they just have a nice easy meal healthy that they can just shove in the oven and they're good to go because I work till seven. But Saturday and Sunday, I have to cook for them a healthy meal. But yesterday, I made a nice pilau with mixed veggies. It was so good. And a nice chicken drumstick stew. Oh, my God. When I see my boys eating, I love it. They ate their food and went for seconds. <laughs> I'm raising African men. Okay, I'm not dilly darling. I'm not dilly darling. <laughs> So, so you can see I had already received some very beautiful stuff from China, right? So when I saw this dildo on Amazon, being and, and the website is AliExpress.com. It takes a while for your merchandise to arrive, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely great price. But of course, it's not the true stones. 
it's not the actual stone it's it's an imitation but it looks really good this is a princess die ring okay 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 all right okay fine I, i'm not reading your comments but <laughs> i know most of you now listen so i go on amazon.com i have these niggas eh? oh and i forgot to say one more thing last year I have been dissed by all these men. I have divorced Ngigi. The ambient specimen has dissed me without even meeting me. He's already done with me. Mm. Then, I'm tired of these fuck boys. I was tired of fuck boys. I hate it. I hate it. Mm -mm, I don't like it. Ati, oh, my boys are asleep. Come over. No, not happening. Mm -mm, no. That's how you get disease. That's how you get disease. That's how you get disease. So anyway, last year, I see a video of a man, a Luya specimen. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, this is my man. My Luya specimen. I saw him on video, on a, on a live. And I was like, who is this man? Because this is my man. Huh? Robert Brawley. Just even starting with his name, Robert Brawley. Then even going to where he's from, Bukalarire. Hey, Aluya specimen. I was in love with Robert Brawley. I can't even, and I had never met him. I just loved everything about him. Everything. Oh, Lord. Now, even him. He blocked me. Hmm. I can't see your comments, so I'm not responding. I'm about to be done. Now even Robert Bulale blocked me because I was going too hard. Too hard on him. Here's the thing. I am a kind of woman that if I see something I want, I go for it. I, I don't sit back and wait for a man to come and get me. I can't I can do it. I don't know how to do that. If I... If I see a man that I'm interested in, that checks all my points, handsome, funny, God-fearing, a good father, hardworking, all those checkpoints have been checked out. I will tell him, I'll be like, dude, listen, we're grown-ups. We're grown. Let's do this. I don't have time to be wooed. I don't have time to woo anybody. I don't have time for dinners and dates and popcorn eating movies. Let's do this. I like you. You're handsome. And you know you're attracted to me, obviously. Why wouldn't you be? Because I'm absolutely gorgeous and intelligent and a great mom, hardworking, high earner. I earn big money. Great homemaker, great cook. Why wouldn't you be in love with me? Let's do this, man. This is what I wanted to tell Robert Burale. But he blocked me. <laughs> so funny. He blocked me. So when he blocked me, I was done. I said, that's it. I'm done with these men. Even though I want to be married to a Kenyan. And retire back home in Bukhararire or in Nyahururu. I was done. So what did I do? I went on Amazon. Remember, I'm very happy with my purchases from AliExpress. AliExpress is a, it's a Chinese website where you can get, get absolutely beautiful stuff for pennies on your dollar. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. So I went on Amazon. This is where I'm going to close. <sighs> and I bought this dildo. And I'm waiting for it. One week, two weeks. Now I'm freaking out. Because I don't want my sons to open the package. Luckily, Amazon, when they deliver a package, thank God I ordered through Amazon. Amazon, shame on you for selling this dildo on your website. Anyway. 
when they deliver a package, they immediately send you an email and say, we've delivered your package. So I was able to see that and I immediately called Josh. I said, go outside, take that package, take it to my bedroom and don't open it, boy. <laughs> Josh is such a good boy. He's so obedient. That's exactly what he did. Johnny, I come home and I open the package. Are you all ready? I opened the package and this is the monstrosity I found. It's a monstrosity. I have never used it. I said to myself, no, uh, -uh. first of all, I tried to even hang on. I, can I show it to you? Should I show? I tried to look at it and I said to myself, Hey, this one even has balls. It literally has balls. It has balls. It is huge. Hey, he. Then, I think they had charged it in China before sending it to me. <laughs> By the way, the box had said extra large. I should have known from that box. It said extra large. I should have kept that box and not thrown it away because I needed to return this monstrosity. It's right here. I'm going to show it to you. And after I show it to you, if you want it, inbox me. I promise you I'll protect your privacy. I'll never tell anybody that I sent it to you. If you don't want it, it is going out in the trash today. Today, today, today. The reason I wanted to talk about this monstrosity is because God has been telling me. And I think this is why he wants me to talk to my boys about sex and what the Bible teaches about sex. And so far we have covered sexual immorality, you know, masturbation, prostitution, pornography, adultery, fornication. My boys know all those things. Kabisa, they've done a test, they passed it, they know. When I ask them, boys, if you're in college and you have sex with a girl, what sin have you committed? Fornication. Good. Boys, if you're married and you cheat on your wife and you have sex with somebody, what sin have you committed? Adultery. Good. And I'm like, boys, when you're in your own apartment one day, and you start watching videos of people, strangers, having sex with each other. What sin have you committed? Pornography, mommy. Yay! And I'm like, boys, when you're grown men and you go and pay somebody to have sex with you, what sin have you committed? Prostitution. Yay! I mean, my boys got it. They got it. I am not releasing my boys into this world without them learning about this, these sins, and learning about sex according to God, according to the Bible. And one of those sins is masturbation. So I ask them, boys, when you wake up in the morning and your pee, -pee is hard and you're just touching it and it feels good or what sin are you committing? Masturbation, mommy. <laughs> I'm like, good job. It is a sin. I know it feels good, but it's a sin. Don't do it. And that is the lesson that my father was trying to teach me when I bought this monstrosity. I'm going to show it to you now. Brace yourself. Grab a drink. Take a sip. Keep in mind, I've never used it. Because at the time it arrived... My father was already telling me that just like fornication is a sin, masturbation is a sin. Don't do it, honey. You're, you're sinning. It's a sin. Don't make excuses. Whether it's fornication, whether it's adultery, whether it's uh, prostitution, whether it's pornography or masturbation, it's still a sexual sin. Don't do it. By the time my father was telling me about this, this monstrosity had already arrived. This monstrosity. This one. This one here. Hey. This monstrosity had already arrived. 
Doesn't it look human-like? It's almost scary. Look, it had already arrived. Now it has arrived and the box says extra large. And now my father is telling me masturbation is a sin. So obviously I have to pause and say, uh, I'm not going to masturbate because my father has said it's a sin. So I tried to work it. I'm trying to open it because it came with a, a battery. I don't know where this battery goes. Like there's no opening for a battery. Nowhere. See? Nowhere. So why did China send me this battery? I don't know. But they sent me these two. Somebody call Suga Shambi. I think that's who I need to send this to. Sue, Suga Shambi. Oka mam. Oka go to mere this monstrosity. They sent me these two remote controllers. I don't know what they do. Okay, so this one seems to turn it on and then it has a heat wave and i don't know what this one does i have no idea i never tried it then there's this other one i don't even know what these do it's just a way 45 dollars waste of money so anywho so uh sorry so i beg your pardon so these are not working. They're not working at all. I mean, come on. You can't turn it on. It's not going on. So I go to the turning on. Oh, it came with a, a charger. So apparently you, it's a magnetic charger. You put it there and you charge it with your uh, uh, thingy in magic. So <laughs> today... <laughs> My boys love going to my bedroom and I don't know why. They just love being in my bedroom. They come in there and they run sack stuff. Especially when I hide their Xbox stuff. They know all my hiding spots. So today, because I wanted to charge this monstrosity, I, I, had, I had said nobody go to my bedroom. Because I didn't want them to find it. So, because <laughs> I was charging it. Because I wanted to show you what this monstrosity does. And after today, I'm throwing it away. I've never used it. Trust and believe. It's very human-like. It's very rubbery. From China. Chinese people are dangerous. Look, it even bends. Hey, hey, you see? It bends in all... Look at that. Then, oh, Lord, look at that. Even a human penis does not do that. So then when you turn it on, you turn it on down here. This is the charging port if you want to electronically charge it. Unbelievable. These Chinese people, manga tuonyohoro, manga tuonyohoro. So, you turn it on, it's a mess. It doesn't, so it turns on. Listen, you, you press it some more, it starts dancing, it starts doing stuff that I have not, never seen. Hey, you see? It vibrates and shakes. I've never seen a human dildo. Where? You see what I have to deal with? First of all, you have to turn it on. I'm telling you, it shakes like this. It goes. Ooh. I was done with it. I was like, no, this is the devil. This is the devil devil look none of the controllers work none of them so my friend my friends women those of you who masturbate my prayer for you is that you stop masturbation is very much a sin as is fornication adultery prostitution or pornography i really wanted to show you what this thing does it goes like this what even a male penis does not do that don't you think that's the devil i'm not gonna sin but if you want to look it has balls complete with balls oh wait so now i've turned it on i think this is where okay so let's see what this does suga shambi Somebody calls Suga Shambi. Oh, so it has fire. This button apparently makes it hot. I don't know. Oh, here, this one. This is the one that makes it go. 
It's not working. It's not working. Oh, you should see this bad boy just go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Anyway, if you want it, inbox me. I will be happy to package it and send it to you. I've never used it. Oh, 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 dear. oh Jesus. You see that? You see that? Hey, hey. And I'm, I'm not going to put that shit in my punani. Look at that. Hey. Ooh, even the batteries have fallen. Jesus. <laughs> you see what I did? This is China for you. China. Who wants this monster? Who wants this monstrosity? Look at that. Hey, hell no. It's going to blow up my womb. It is going to... Jesus. <clears throat> block my tubes. It's going to blow up my ovaries this is chinese people look at that eh. hey. kenyan men they can't even do that Woo! jesus hell no <laughs> somebody come and get this i need it though how do you turn it off? Guy. Oh my God. Oh Lord. Turn it off. Oh my God. It's not going off, guys. Peace be still. Dequeda. 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 I don't want it. I don't want it. I want the real thing. I want my husband, my own husband. So, when you receive this, you will have two remote controllers. You'll have a battery that I don't know where it goes. And you will have this monstrosity. I don't want it. Never used it. I was like, uh-uh, no. Jeez. And you will have a charger. There you go. Inbox me. Hey, today we're talking about masturbation. Masturbation is a sin. Oh, Lord. It looks like it was going in my mouth. Oh, Jesus, it's a mess. I have to go go with my children. Woo and it will come in my very own MK bag. Bye, guys. Next week on the Angie Shiko Keeping It Real Zone, I'll have my 16-year-old with me, and we will be talking about teens and dating in diaspora. Because I really need our teens to understand what dating at such a young age could do to them. And I want them to be pure. I want them to stay pure until they walk down the aisle. That is my greatest prayer for my children. Because I wish somebody had told me, Shiko, just stay pure. Don't sleep with anybody. Don't have sex. I wish somebody had told me that. Nobody did. But guess what? I'm going to tell my boys about it. They hear it from me every day. And next week we'll, we'll be talking about that. And the various sins that the Bible talks about that we should avoid sexually. All right? I love you guys. Have a great week. I'm done. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Jesus, oh my God.